So I'm helping my dad pick some sawdust up to his mom's house for in her barn. And I just realized I was supposed to give you a phone call about this and then I got busy and I forgot. Is there a nice shirt by the way? Is uh is there anything you want to tell me about a you, you're adopted? A, a certain no well, no I had a suspicion <laughs> about that. About a certain someone's new work truck and the tailgate or uh, the, the bumper. Of, I uh <laughs> it's actually a, quite a funny story, Steve. Coming from you, I bet it is a funny story. Whenever I was disconnecting the uh, dump trailer the other day, I had the bed all the way up. So I disconnected the hitch and the uh, weight towards the back, not on the jack, had lunged it forward. Hey, uh, the good thing I wasn't hurt. You know, that's the important thing, right? But how's my new work truck? Uh, it's got a bed. I can't have anything nice. Hey, and, and since she brought it up, since she brought it up. This might have backfired. How does mud flaps come in? You told me you were going to get them. Oh my God. You said, don't worry about it, I'll get them. I see. Because I went out looking for them and I kept calling you about sizing and if you wanted, you said, ah, it's all right, I'll get them. Along with my running boards. You want me to get them? I would prefer mud flaps on the truck first. Okay, all right, I'll make it happen this week. You heard it right here, people. I'll you make, heard it right here. It's Tuesday at 10.30. I will have them on there by Friday afternoon. Is it Tuesday already? Yes. All right. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to Conquer the Hosses. Okay, back up at the shop. I'm not gonna bore you with another long maintenance video. I've already done that way too much. Uh, but I did want to just touch on our power buggies real quick. A lot of viewers have been asking about this. So I, I do wanna get this out. So we got the garage all painted. I have a metal roof ceiling ordered. It'll be in in about five days. So I thought, well, let's go ahead and get this pulled in. Right here, number one, number two. Yeah. What a gorgeous day. Now it's colder than it looks. It's about 38 degrees, maybe 40 degrees. It's getting nice out. So we are getting ready to start pouring some concrete again. Just keep this one back here. Right about here. So we do a quick maintenance on these. And I want to talk about our splash guards. Okay, these are our power buggies that we use pretty much every day now. It used to be we would just take them and bring them out when we couldn't get the cement concrete trucks into the place. Uh, but now they're pretty much hooked to the truck on their own trailer, and we bring them with us just about every day. I'll check this camera angle and redo this if I have to. When I first got them, the problem was as you dump them, they splash concrete everywhere. You know, once once it tilts to about, you know, two feet off the ground, dumping concrete, it just splashes everything. So we would have to stand here holding plastic, you know, two guys or wrap around plastic if you're, you know, whatever, just protecting it. So it didn't take long I come up with this idea. Uh, I just made a bracket out of six by six, uh, probably three sixteenths. You know, and I just came up with this design, you know, something like that, you know, that the bar could go in and hook into right there. So I wanted them on and off real easy. Now we can fill it full of limestone, gravel, run it in, dump it. It fits under the truck tailgate. I, I know you've seen us do that. Uh, 
last summer and the summer in the summer you know but um now when we go to concrete we put these splash guards on just a quick and there you go now the chute to the concrete truck goes in here <coughs> and away you go and when you dump the concrete of course it comes out right here and all you're splashing is the back of this carpet <coughs> excuse me we get about I'm sorry, I had to check and see if the camera was on. We get about two to three months of these before they get splashed up and then they just get too heavy. But for 20 bucks, it used to be 10, it went to 15. I just saw them at Home Depot, 20 bucks now. You can throw a new carpet on here. Uh, they're always available, that's why I use them. It's a nice width. I'm sure anything, there's a number of other things that would work, but these are nice and light. They're cheap, rubber. You hose them, hose them off when you're done, and they stay nice. We don't always have time to get them fully cleaned. Uh, so this is the design I like. Easy in and out. Now we got this newer power buggy, and I was, you know, I'm always thinking like, how could I improve this? So I come up with this design. I don't like this design. Uh, it just doesn't, one, look as good. As well as when we put our traction mats across here, it puts a lot of pressure on here. These, I wasn't even thinking about it. The traction mats rest on here, they touch here, and they touch here. Uh, gives it equal pressure around that hopper. I don't like how when we you know, put six mats on here to get them back to the truck, quite heavy and I'm worried it's gonna break this. So I'm taking these off and I'm gonna make, I'm gonna copy these and put them on here. So for you viewers that have been asking about it, that's how I make them. Just cut this with a set of torches, plasma cutter, whatever you have. A couple bolts right through the side and notice I went through the flange. I didn't come inside the hopper. There's a nice lip around here that you can get a wrench into right there and nut and bolt. They've been like that for about, oh boy, I'm gonna say four or five years working good. So that's about all I'm gonna talk about with these. I have plenty of maintenance video out there on these buggies. If you have any particular questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But uh, I just wanted to touch on that real quick for a couple of viewers that have been asking. Hey Bill, uh, Tom Hawes, TSH Concrete. Hey, I'm doing service work on the power buggies. I got everything I need. Uh, I just need the hydraulic filters. Uh, I can't find them anywhere. Do you, uh, do you have them in stock? Okay, yeah, if you could check on that for me, great. Uh, if you have them, I need three of them. Okay, all right, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks, Bill. This is adjusted almost all the way back. These are quite loose. So I'm going to run these down to the parts store and we'll see if I can't get just the next size bigger and maybe just a tiny bit smaller belt. Uh, we'll get new belts on here, put the guard back on there and that's ready to go. Uh, what I was saying earlier was I had um, hydraulic filters delivered uh, they were able to find them at Knickerbocker and uh, Bill ran them out. So if you have the buggies, can't find filters, try Knickerbocker. Uh, they they seem to have them in stock. Um, so change those filters and I think the power buggies are ready to go. I still didn't make that bracket. I would really like to do that. So we'll see. It's early. I, I'll probably have time today. There are two new filters. One and two. I filled those up with hydraulic fluid, screwed them on the machine. Now the old fluid I just add to my waste oil. Filters go in the garbage and oil goes to the local waste oil burner. Alright, I'll get these buttoned up. 
That's about These it. These are all serviced and greased. Uh, it's only about, uh, might be going on three o'clock. So I got plenty of time. I'm going to go ahead and change these brackets out. Just lining this up. Now I'll take a piece of soap. And just trace right in there what I want. That's what I'm looking for. So I'll cut two of these. And these will go on here. When all done, Bracket two, I just unbolted it. So now, I take it back to the drill press. I put that one on backwards. You idiot. So I wanna drill these holes right like that. terrible camera angle but it's kind of tight up in there to uh, put the nut and bolt on there my magnet I have a smaller magnet of course I can't find it so I just put a nut a small nut on top of the magnet there's maybe a trick that'll help you get into a little tight place so I stand the lock washer and nut right up on there and slide it right in Voila. There we go. There we go. Now I can put a wrench on that. Snug that up. Right here. Bring it up. So I put a lock washer on there just to seat into the plastic once they get slopped up with concrete they don't come loose okay just a quick quick recap of what I did today um, could not get the hydraulic filters uh, locally I had to call a dealer in Pittsburgh they're checking on hydraulic filters that's who I was just talking to we'll see about those tomorrow I would like to change them so on this machine oil filter new oil fuel filter here's a nice feature on these machines right here is the drain plug make sure I get that right here behind this track is the drain plug 14 millimeter wrench on there you can drain it right into a pan, really easy. After you heat the engine up, drain that oil right there. Uh, I changed, it's a twin cylinder. I changed two spark plugs, one right up in this, here, maybe from up here. Spark plug and spark plug. New air cleaners, this one's good to go. As I was talking earlier, uh, other videos I don't know that I've ever had these side by side uh, this older one I have to take these off and pump grease in here and then 
pull the grease gun off, put the cap on before all the grease comes on. It's a real pain, I hate doing it. The newer one has a grease fitting built in. Breeze right through those in about 30 seconds. Good improvement. If you're interested in the buggies, there they are. You can reach out to Carol's Supply, they'll hook you up. These hoppers rotate 180 degrees side to side. The tracks, we have never gotten a buggy stuck. Okay, I'll get these put back on here. I just wanted to give you a real quick recap. Grease, yeah, maybe a cleaning, we'll see. Okay, see you on the job site real soon. Almost ready. Good morning, welcome to Concrete with the Hosses. It is still winter time, uh, middle of February. We're gonna go ahead and pour this patio. Uh, so, I was busy while these guys were prepping. I'd like to fire my maintenance mechanic. He's terrible. If you've watched any of my videos, you know it's me. So I put a new carburetor on here, new stator, new spark plug, air cleaner. Gave it a nice old tune-up. It's running great. I didn't change the belts. The belts are super loose and one came off and got jammed in there. I had to take the guard off. It's laying right over there. Dig the belt out. It's working. But what a pain on the job. I'm trying to get other stuff done and I'm messing with that. So here is top of patio just getting this all graded in this is the one a couple of a couple of months ago I did a video we were working up here in the rain and I was talking about the over dig and I showed you how it all settled that was this area right in here now Tom uh, that works here had that all filled in uh, before I got here so I, I wasn't able to show you what it looked like you know when we showed up it was, how much it had settled it he already had it built in so this is pretty much how i saw it so let's finish tamping okay so what i wanted to show you there is you can see my paths through the gravel it felt about the same out here in the center as it did against the wall still getting a little bit of movement in the stone now the gravel sort of always moves if this was limestone it would lock in pretty good and you would see very little movement so running back and forth until you see an acceptable amount of movement you're always going to see a little bit but uh minimal you know if, if it's still sinking you know like here's an inch difference from one side to the other i'd hit that you know at least once more maybe two more times through here so i'm going to go ahead and do that and then we'll put our end caps on and do a final grade just wanted to touch on that real quick steve's going from the back wall to our front form Now we know we have the same plane right through here. Now he'll take a number down here and it'll match his number over there. Go ahead. here to the front porch I do not have a 2 by 8 long enough to do that front sill and I don't want to cleat it together and then have to work around that so I got a 2 by 10 come down seven and a quarter I put a mark in the middle look good. good so I'll rip that down Oh, he took my nail. 
That's all right. He just he just gave me a handful of screws, so that's okay. It's a good trade. So this is all split. Don't mind ripping that. Just make sure I don't cut through the wheelbarrow. Can you uh, steady me right there, and I'll run through this pretty quick. Hold this. Yep. There you go. So what makes a nice rip is set the blade where you want it look at the guide and then put your thumb right here always know where your fingers are right now you don't really even have to look at the blade Okay, now, with any luck, make sure you can see that. Pretty good. So that'll be my bottom. Here's my top. That's going right okay, on. Starting there. off the new year, I might as well talk about this. So we need to get from our concrete height up to the door height. A lot of times we do that just by a four inch sill. You can step on the threshold as well as this, or you can step over it. If we put a step here, you know, 12 or 14 inches, now we're taking up a lot of room in the patio. It's really not necessary. Uh, cut your sideboards on an angle. You can get a screw right in the top. One screw in the back. That's good and secure. Now we need to do something across here, otherwise that's going to bow. So I run screws in. Give it a wrap. Make sure these are tight. Real tight. Give them a nice twist and really lock that in. And where'd my screw go? Right here. So you're shooting for five inches out here? No. Just put a level on it? A light quarter fall. Run those in. And repeat. This is about seven feet long. See, there's no way that's coming off. You do not want these to come off while you're pouring. So one, two, three across here. That's about every 24 to 30 inches. Keep it straight as an arrow. with two feathers. No, I'm just kidding. I heard that somewhere before. Somebody was saying that. Yeah, that's straight as an arrow with two feathers. <laughs> I thought it was kind of funny. Okay, so with these coming straight out, even here, we want to be center. Center center knowing that this is my top so I'm gonna remark those we want these wires pulling straight we want these wires pulling straight when we're done yeah Screws. Sure. Where'd the drill go? Right here. That's not the drill. Oh, that drill. I think one is back. Okay. That's the drill. Okay, you want to give me a hand? So I measured up seven and a quarter when I put my blocks on. There we go. Now we know our sill is even with the threshold. You look low on the line. Yeah, the bottom's flush. 
Okay. And over here. Okay, I have a couple. Just give me one in the top and I'll make sure we're good. How many different nails and screws you carry in that one pouch? Yeah, this that's my oddball pouch. That's my it's like a junk drawer in a kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> now I okay. find all those cut nails, so I just added to it. Okay, so I'm gonna see what's going on. This is all flush. We want to be even here. Yep, good. Perfect. We should have one line. Okay, good. Now, my last thing. You want to put that screw in? Yeah. I need a screw right here. Okay. Run a screw in there. Now with my hole, I hope you can see this. I have three to go. I can adjust the camera angle through my hole. Uh, there's some junk laying to my left. Do a wrap. Now, what we usually use is an eight penny nail. Let's give this another twist. Just tighten that up. There is that is not coming off. That's not bowing. Good. All right, I'll finish these up. Okay, here's what we're looking for. We want this nice and level, as well as stand back. Keep in mind, I have those plastic guards pulled up. I always come back and look at it in relation to the door, and it looks even from side to side. So that looks nice. Because if these are crooked, it just takes away from everything. So four and three quarter. four and three quarter and that'll push ever so slightly to four and three quarter so that'll be nice and straight there's our wire ties all twisted tight and secure one two three we'll go over that tomorrow when we're stripping Jim has a light quarter now this is outside but it's undercover so we can get by with a little bit little bit less fall so heading away from the house now we want this level so we'll put that side on and we'll make sure we're level across go ahead so we're working down here and Tom said hey why don't you take these logs with you as if we need more logs but how can you say no look at this white oak it's at about 20 inches all prime one knot there we can cut that off that's 18 inches here comes another good one yeah we'll take them home thanks do you want any lumber nope. okay you may say that change your mind when you see it yep. <laughs> here comes number two this is the real nice looking one there nice and straight a little bit of an arc to it should be a nice some nice lumber coming out of that missed our other videos uh, this is my sawmill the LX 150 wood miser uh, just cutting some lumber these are new decking boards for the trailer I'm gonna turn them into and this I don't know what I'm gonna do with that baby so I have all these logs stocked up I'll add these to it and we'll do some cutting throughout the season